welcome to the video in this video we'll be talking about the idea behind convolution many students usually will learn signals and system in the second year of engineering and usually they'll be having a lot of doubts when they start studying convolution so in this video i will try to address some of the doubts and uh, hopefully i'll clear the doubts of many students so let's begin with what was the idea behind convolution uh, as you all know convolution applies only to lti systems applies to lti systems so we have uh, learnt about lti systems lti systems should follow two properties one is linearity and second one is time invariance suppose this is an lti system uh, we have said that if x of t is the input and if h of t is the impulse response that is h of t is nothing but the response of an same lti system if the input is del of t so if we know del of h of t and if x of t is the input we will be knowing the input we can determine the output y of t by using the convolution theorem which states that convolution of x of t with impulse response gives you the output for continuous time input signals this can be written as minus infinity to infinity x of tau x of t minus tau d tau see this is a simple integral many people who are good at maths will be able to solve this integral and will be able to uh, get the required answer but uh, many students will fail to understand the like will uh, will fail to understand the idea of what was going on behind convolution and why did we solve the integral so uh, they have to understand the idea behind convolution and the concept of this integral like what exactly are we doing with this this is the x of tau and this is time shifted impulse response the convolution is defined for both the continuous time signals and for discrete time signals in this uh, like uh, we'll see example we'll see the discrete time signal if uh, the discrete time signal is x of n and if we apply this to an lti system whose impulse response is h of n then it is same as a continuous time itself like uh, we can get the output by using convolution theorem x of n convolved with h of n uh, here the y of n will become here we will uh, remove the integral and we will use summation summation k equal to minus infinity to infinity x of k x of n minus k what we are doing is we are multiplying x of k at k instant and multiplying it with time shifted impulse response let's see what's the idea behind convolution theorem like how we'll get the output of an lti system with input x of n and impulse response h of n like what was the idea behind it the first step was representing a signal as a number of impulses as you can see in this uh, figure below dotted lines i have uh, drawn three figures uh, with impulses at various times just as in x of n in x of n we have three values at minus 1 1 and 2 the same i did at in this uh, figure at minus 1 i have represented drawn just one impulse and at the n equal to 1 i have drawn one impulse and at n equal to 2 I have drawn one impulse. So what they did was representing a signal as a number of impulses. This is same as x of n. If we add all these three figures like below the dotted lines, we will end up with x of n. So what they did was uh, after dividing the x of n into number of impulses, they tried to find the impulse response of that single impulse so you can see this is x of minus 1 and for minus 1 we have an impulse we will represent it by del of t plus 
1. So the output is x of minus 1, h of n plus 1. Sorry, this has to be n plus 1, l of n plus 1. We will do the same thing to the simples. This is nothing but x of 1, h of n minus 1. And for the third impulse, LTI, this is x of 2, h of n minus 2. So what we did was, we divided x of n into number of impulses and we found the, and we applied them as an input, like single input. There were three impulses, we gave those three impulses as a separate input and found the response. Since this is a linear time invariant system, the output is linear combination of all those inputs. So y of n is equal to x of minus 1, x of n plus 1, plus x of 1, x of n minus 1, plus x of 2, x of n minus 2. So this is the idea behind convolution. So if we just know the impulse response, we will be able to figure the output. Like in this case, I divided the signal into number of impulses. Since I was knowing the impulse response and uh, the value associated with that impulse, uh, I, I was able to find the output of the whole system, that is x of n. So the calculations which I have done below dotted lines, the same like if you give x of n to this uh, LDA system, will be able to uh, end up with same uh, output. So what uh, we do in general is, uh, since I represented this as x of minus 1, x of 1, x of 2, this is nothing but x of k. And this is time shifted impulse response. You can see this is h of n plus 1, h of n minus 1, h of n minus 2. We add all this. So. Uh, I will uh, tell you the final equation for this calculation of convolution. Let's see the equation of convolution for discrete time signals. The output of an LTI system if the input is x of n is this is an LTI system, it's y of n, the input response x of n, and input x of n is mention k equal to minus infinity to infinity x of k, h of n minus k. So what this equation tells us is, suppose if we have an x of n, we divide it into number of impulses and we find the impulse response of this impulses. Like we are representing this x of n as number of impulses. This is nothing but x of k. This x of k can be represented as x of k into del. This is say minus 1. Here we can represent it as del of n plus 1. So the output will be x of k h of n plus 1. In the same way we apply the other impulses and we will get the output. Okay, this is the output, we will get this output for uh, this impulse and for this we get this. So add this, we will get pi of n. So this is nothing but say x of minus 1, h of n plus 1, this is x of 1, h of n minus 1, x of 2, h of n minus 2. So if we add this, we get the above formula. So this is the basic idea behind convolution. So that's why it, it, it is very important to know the just impulse response and we can will be able to figure out the output of an LTI system for any input x of n. So this is the idea behind convolution. In the next video, we'll see how uh, we can find convolution. If the input signal is continuous time. Thank you.